Thanks, Jeff. And uh, thank you to everybody who took the time out here and is taking the time to listen to this very important matter. Um, as Jeff stated, I'm Nicole Wade. I actually am a partner with Rutzel and Andrus, and uh, we were contacted by a member of the Home Board after the allegations of possible criminal activity by Home Board members. As you know, there is nothing more serious than somebody making allegations of criminal activity. It directly affects people's lives, reputation, freedom, and their business activities. I was a federal prosecutor for 12 years, and I can tell you that I know the press used to get extremely upset when they would call me and ask for information about an investigation. There's a reason I did not give you that information when I was a prosecutor. One was because I was protecting my investigation, and two, it was because I was protecting the people who were being accused. Until criminal activity is actually known, that should not be put into the public record, and a clerk of the court, frankly, should understand the seriousness of those allegations and the repercussions of something like that. So some, uh, one of the members of the Home Board comes to me, and uh, they state that at a public meeting, it was alleged that criminal activity was going on with Home, and they wanted to know, what should we do? And so I said, has, you know, has law enforcement contacted you? What, what law enforcement agency are they talking about? And they said, well, it was HUD OIG, and the allegation was that HUD OIG was going to receive a letter of complaint about Home. So I said, okay, well, has HUD OIG called you? No, no, they haven't called me. I said, okay, well, how about we call HUD OIG? So I called the Office of Inspector General with HUD, and the Office of Inspector General told me that no such complaint had been received by their office. And to this date, and we're talking months now, no such complaint has been received by HUD OIG. And I want to be clear. I was hired for criminal complaints of a federal level, HUD OIG, and I have constantly been in contact with HUD OIG in an attempt to solve this matter from a legal perspective and a criminal perspective. I requested, on behalf of the Home Board that sits before you now, for HUD OIG agents to come and speak to us, to look at all of the books we have, which the press will be allowed to look at later, to look at the pictures of these renovations, to understand the amount of money that was spent from private funds as opposed to grant funds on this project. HUD OIG, rightly so, told me, if we don't have a complaint, Nicole, why are we going to spend taxpayer money? When we receive a complaint, we'll be more than happy to sit down and talk with you, but why would we spend taxpayer money? And that's what makes me so angry about this. It's a great question. Why are we spending taxpayer money? And when you look at the slides that I'm about to show you, everything which was in the public record, everything which was in the clerk of the court's own files, I hope you ask the question, why? Why are we spending the taxpayers' money on this? Next slide, please. We're talking about two grants here. As Jeff explained earlier, I'm just gonna go a little bit more into the numbers for you. There's the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, which was $427,472. The CDBG funds were used for the acquisition of seven of the 12 homes. Seven of the 12, it actually comes out to about 6.5. Private funds were used to acquire the additional houses. Private funds, what are private funds? Private funds are, are money that was taken out of the pockets of board of directors and other people who donated to a charity program. Private, they are not county funds, they are not federal funds, they are not state funds. And it's important that you realize that this was a charitable organization and charity is exactly what they were trying to give back to this community. There were also SHIP funds used. SHIP funds were only used to rehabilitate the houses. CDBG was only used to acquire, and that was done, frankly, in the very, very beginning of this program. SHIP funds were only used to help rehabilitate. There were two SHIP agreements, and uh, neither Cl Clifton Larson nor the clerk's office seemed to identify that there were, in fact, three agree grant agreements. 
The first one was for $45,137 for 4174 18th Place Southwest. Again, there are files for each one of those houses and all those records are in those files that you'll be able to review after this press conference. That was the very first house used that was done prior. Every single reimbursement was in fact checked by HHS, Health and Human Services, an inspector from the county. They were approved by the clerk of the court's office himself and the board of county commissioners actually issued a certificate of completion for each of these houses. So for, this, for the board or the county to come back now and say that none of this was done would implicate that they're extremely incompetent or something else is going on here. Of the $150,000 SHIP award for a renovation of property, um, $150,000 was used for the renovation properties. Every single penny of that was used for renovation. We've hired an independent auditor to go through the, that money and I'll discuss that as we go on in the presentation, but you can be clear, and the documents over there back it up, every single penny was used for renovation of that $150,000. Now when the board of directors came into me and they told me the amount of grant money, and they told me that they had in fact acquired what, what I call 12 is, is what we use, because the 13th home, frankly, um, was not counted in any part of an audit or any part of the Clifton Larson report. When they told me that they had in fact acquired 12 homes and renovated them for $427,000 and a little bit over $190,000, frankly, think about those numbers. Think about the quote that I just got to redo my kitchen. That, frankly, is an incredible feat that only could be accomplished with private funds in addition to any state or federal grant. Not a county grant, state or federal grant. Next page, please. In my world, um, and again, I say that I was a federal prosecutor for 12 years. In my world, evidence is everything. And what I did when the board of directors came to me and they said, research this, Nicole, look at this, investigate it. And I did. And where did I look first? Well, first, I looked to the public record. And then I looked for any other additional information out there. But I have to tell you, look as the press to the public record. Every single piece of evidence you need is in the public record. It's in the clerk's files. For me, a picture says a thousand words. And so the majority of this presentation is gonna show you the renovation that was in fact done, the amount of work that went into this, and the amount of time that was donated by the board of directors themselves. Over on those two tables, there are hundreds of pictures of the renovations because these people didn't just do this to give out money. They did it because they care about the community. They went, they watched the renovations being done. They donated their time. BCBE donated more money and time than you know any other construction company I can think of. The board was there, John Barlow was there every day, talking with the workers, sitting down, having coffee, discussing the rehab. This was a project that was supposed to be something for the community. And it's unfortunate, frankly, that it's turned into something else. So this is the before picture of 4174 18th place. This is the after picture, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. <laughs> Does that look like there was no work being done? Does that look like something that was, was just never finished or never completed? The allegations at that community meeting at, before the board of Lee County was that $400,000 just vanished and we have no idea where the $400,000 was. Those were the allegations of the clerk of the court. That's where the criminal allegations supposedly come through. That's what supposedly was going to be referred to HUD OIG. So I looked for the $400,000. I tracked the $400,000 down and that $400,000 is in the pictures that you see in addition to hundreds of thousands of private funds as well. Next page. Here are some of the other pictures of after renovations for this one property. 
Next page. Here's just some facts about 4174 18th place. The purchase date was May 13th, 2008. The sale date was December 29th, 2008. It's important to note that that is not a lot of time to, to buy and completely furbish a home. They were moving quickly in order to get these homes available for people in Collier County who could not afford these houses otherwise. The purchase price was 92,500. Of this CDBG, zero. Private funds were used to purchase this home. Of ship, hun ship funds, $45,137. Look back at the photographs, look back at the pictures of the renovations. It appears to me that that would be $45,137, very well spent. Next page. Now this is the most important slide, and I want you to look at the slide for each of the houses. These were the documents that were submitted to and are received by Collier County in support of the renovations. Collier County Health and Human Services reviewed all reports submitted by home for reimbursement of ship funds and payment of the funds was approved by the Collier County Clerk's Office. All of those documents are in the Collier County Clerk's file and HHS. HHS inspected the properties to make sure the work was, was completely done. The Collier County Board of Commissioners awarded a certificate of completion to BCBE. These are county documents that are being provided to home, all of which are in the public record, and all the clerk of court had to do was slide down and look at one of the affordable houses that in fact is out there. One of these homes was actually purchased by somebody that works at the clerk's office, so perhaps an interview with that person would have been sufficient to figure out what happened, what renovations were made, and the good that the home program in fact did. Next page, please. This is 2082 41st Terrace before. And this is after. Go ahead. <laughs> It's a little slow on the take, this thing. <laughs> um, this is before. Here is some information about that. December 9th, purchased April 24th, um, is actually completed and sold. $65,000 was the purchase price. CDBG, you're gonna note, they're the same number because the CDBG funds were only used for acquisition of the properties. Ship, 13,615. Private funds were used to assist in the renovation of that home. Next. One of the most well, I was a damning for the clerk of court, the most beneficial pieces of evidence for the home board of directors are the final appraisals that you are going to find in the clerk's own file. The final appraisals of each of these properties tells you the extent of the renovations that were in fact made. The appraisal says it. Yet we're questioning whether this work was ever done, where did the 400000 go? $400,000 go, the final appraisals state things like aluminum vents, roof reg vents, impact windows per the realtor. Recent updates renovations include a new roof, hurricane impact windows, newer kitchen cabinets, new paint, interior and exterior, new code garage door. And remember from the slide before, the amount of ship funds that was actually used for renovations. The rest of this was completed with private funds by home. That's important to remember. No one's trying to steal money. If anything, the Home Board of Directors is losing money at this point. But they did it because they believe in a project and they wanted people to have affordable housing in Collier County. Next. Again, this is the documents. Same documents um, with the addition of actually a few others the Collier County HSS reviewed the reports. They were approved by the Collier County Clerk's Office. HHS inspected them, and it was, a, it was a very thorough inspection for each of these properties. 
they would be inspected before a certificate of completion would even be issued by county board of county commissioners. Some of the commissioners of whom were the ones who stated that nothing had been done. Um, HUD one statements are in there and your appraisals are all in there. Next. Here's 4833 21st place before. Go ahead. In order to quicken this up, I'll start going a little quicker. I can tell you that for all of these, this is after. And again, all of the photographs from these renovations are over there, and I urge you all to go look at them. When you see the amount of photographs that were taken, all taken by John Barlow, you're going to understand the amount of time that HUD and the board of directors spent on these properties. This was December, I uh, hope oh, we're missing it to there, uh, 2008 to August 2009, purchase price 57.5, CDBG 57.5. Again, CDBG is only used for acquisition. Ship 4,350, private funds used for the rest. Next. Now here's a great one. Um, this exactly tells you, not only tells you the renovations that were in fact made in the final appraisal, but even gives you kind of the time period. Subject was purchased as a bank owned property in December 2008, was rehabilitated and includes garage door and opener, AC system, windows replaced, interior and extra to painted, water heater, kitchen appliances. I mean, it goes on and on and tells you in great detail exactly the renovations that were made. If this was in the clerk's own file, then why couldn't the clerk just look this up? Why did Clifton Larson have to come involved at all? Next. These are the documents submitted. I urge you to look at those documents. Again, the appraisals are in there. The inspections are in there. The certificates of completion for BCBE are in there. So for the clerk to then allege that BCBE didn't do any work is frankly just outrageous. Next. 1883 48th Street before, and you can see the work being done. After. Next. This was one that was purchased also a CDBG for 80,000, 10,440. Private funds were used to assist with renovations in this one as well. It's important to note that a lot of the renovations were in fact donated from local businesses because local businesses also understood the importance of this program, even if the county seems to not. This appraisal statement, home has been extensively remodeled on interior and exterior, including a new roof, interior and exterior paint, new tile flooring and baths. Again, this is all in the public record. Next. These are the documents submitted. Next. 230754 Terrace. That's the before. Here's the after. Fifty two five for CDBG, fifteen thousand five sixty seven for ship funds. Private funds were helped to assist in renovations so that the project could in fact be completed. Next. Home has been extensively remodeled on the interior and exterior. Again, it's all documented in the public record. Next. These are the documents submitted to the county, to HHS, to call your county clerk's office, to the call your county board of commissioners. This is 5119 5, court before. This just, I put this one here just to show you that the work is in fact obviously being completed by BCBE. Uh, that one was also 70,000 of CDBG, shipped $10,863. Documents submitted. This is the before of 2349 51st Street. You're going to see just 
evidence of the brand new AC unit there. Zero CDBG. That home was bought with private funds. 17,404 for ship was used to help renovations. Here's another appraisal statement that goes along with this home, which gives you the extensive renovations that were made to this property. These are the documents submitted to Collier County, HHS, and the Board of County Commissioners. After. And as taxpayers, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I would challenge the county, why hasn't anyone been to these homes? If there's such a question about what is going on, why didn't anyone visit? The Board of, Com the Board of County Commissioners, there in fact were a few people there and we're gonna discuss that later, but to anyone from the clerk's office, the Home Board of Directors was definitively there. This purchase date, February 18, October 26. Again, we're talking about a rapid turnaround in order to make these homes available for people who could not afford homes otherwise. Purchase price is 53.5. CDBG was a little less because that's when Home Board actually ran out of grant money and had to start purchasing the homes with private funds. Jeff had alluded to earlier that when we first um, asked for the funds, we had asked for 800,000 something dollars of federal funds, and Jeff said, and then we decided to go a little less scope um, with, our, with our project. The reality is, is that they did, the Home Board of Directors did ask for 800,000, they got $400,000, but they didn't go less in scope. The rest of it was subsidized with private funds so that they could actually achieve the objectives and the goals that they first started out with, but they did it with their nonprofit organization and their charitable efforts and their donations of not only money but time. Here are the appraisal statements. Again, these are the documents on the public record. Please get them, look at them, review them. This is evidence that the allegations of the clerk of the court that any criminal activity was conducted are absolutely false. This is 2798th Avenue. This is after. February 18th to July, 57.5 was used CDBG, shipped 16,256. Here's your appraisal statement which says the home has been remodeled. Here are the documents that are on the public record to show that the home has been remodeled and a simple public document search or review of his own file would have shown that those improvements had actually been made. 2841 2nd Avenue after. And I might just add that the homes, frankly, you can see for yourself, are beautiful. Purchase price of 70. This house was bought with private funds. The ship funds used to renovate were $19,921. Over the past five months, the subject has been completely rehabbed. The evidence is in the record. You can find them in the public record, public information request. 4130 Cindy Avenue is before. $75,000 was the purchase price. This was bought with private funds. CDBG was used for renovations. Subject had been very well maintained and recently renovated. The subject was in like new condition due to remodeling. These are pretty strong statements from an appraiser. These are the documents submitted. We're nearing, we're nearing the end here. 530 10th Street before. After with the new and completely new water heater. Here's the kitchen. $62,009 was a purchase price. This was privately funded for acquisition. Ship was used for renovations. These are the documents that were submitted to the county on behalf of reimbursements, all which were approved by the court.
What's the result of this? Well, the acquisition of the properties and the remodeling was just the beginning. The second part was finding people who qualified for affordable housing. And that's exactly what the HOME program did. At the end of this entire program, all which ran in a relatively short span of time, 12 houses were completely renovated, just as you saw, and 12 families who qualified for affordable housing were and are residing in those homes. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not criminal. That is a success. This is a statement, and this is the statement, one of the statements why I was involved to look at federal criminal charges or allegations thereof that were supposedly going to HUD OIG. Collier County Clerk Dwight Brock stated at the County Commission meeting in January 2014, I have no idea who it was that did the work. Apparently, he didn't look at the BCBE invoices or any of the contracts that his county, HHS, reviewed or his clerk's office, in fact, approved. I have absolutely no proof that the work was done. Apparently, he never reviewed the file that included the appraisal, the certificates of completion, the building inspections, or any of the invoices that were in fact submitted that were requested by the county. I have nothing to substantiate any of these invoices. Perhaps a walk down to one of these homes and you could have in fact seen the renovations for yourself. It's been three years and all of these homes are in Collier County. This is an example of the same thing over and over for each of these homes all 13 times. This is an example of the same thing over and over again, but it has nothing to do with home, and in fact has to do with the county clerk's own office. This is the evidence on the record. This is the evidence that is available to every one of us in addition to the clerk's office, in addition to the Board of County Commissioners. Home purchased 12 houses. HHS reimbursed the purchase price of seven out of those 12 with CDB funds. Home provided HUD-1 statements and appraisals to HHS, all of which you can recover, and the Collier County Clerk's Office approved all of those reimbursements. The documents are there. Collier County HHS reviewed all reports submitted for home for reimbursement of ship funds, including invoices and lien releases. Payment of the funds was approved by the Collier County Clerk's Office. This documentation was accepted by Collier County and all grant run fund reimbursements were approved by the County Clerk's Office. In June 2010, Home received a CDBG closeout document from Collier County HHS in June 2010, noting there was no program income or, irreg or irregularities. Frankly, I wasn't satisfied with that. I just wasn't. I wasn't satisfied with the, with the audit by the clerk's office, and um, I was actually, in fact, clearly not satisfied with the evaluation by Clifton Larson. And neither was the Home Board of Directors because they want everything to be perfect. They want to clear their name and I want to clear it for them because I really do believe this was an injustice. So we hired MRW Consulting Group LLP and you can look them up online. Uh, they're comprehensive forensic accountants, ladies and gentlemen. These are the real thing. And we have provided thousands and thousands of documents to include invoices, receipts, bank statements, so that they could do an actual audit of the home program. We received a draft uh, audit report from them this week. And in that audit report, it was found, much akin but for different reasons to the original audit done by the clerk's office, that. The SHIP funds left in the program, um, in the loan, are not program income until the owner, in fact, sells the property. So the SHIP funds have nothing to do with program income. As far as the CDBG funds go, and I will quote, and again, this is a draft report. I have requested a final report, but I requested another auditor to review the final report because we want this to be perfect. And if law enforcement wants to sit down and look at this, I invite law enforcement to do so because it is time that this cloud is lifted from the board of directors. They are suffering financially, they are suffering via their reputation, and frankly, enough is enough. Program income, it is defined. 
playing by the rules A handbook for CDB subrecipients on administrative systems. Look it up. It's playing by the rules A handbook for CDBG subrecipients on administrative systems from HUD. It states, Income generated by an activity that is only partially assisted with CDBG funds must be prorated to reflect the percentage of CDBG funds used to determine the portion that is in fact program income. When you get through all the numbers, the total cost of this project was $1.376,000 $475.55. The CDBG funds used were $427,472. That is 31% of this entire program. Those numbers are offset by the private funds that are put into this program, which far exceed any grant money that was placed into this program. What does that mean? There was no program income evidence do you have that's on the record. The final prices for the houses are incorporated in this PowerPoint today and they're part of the public record and are part of the county clerk's own file. The appraisal state and details the renovations made and I would ask that you actually take a serious and close look at those appraisals. They even include some of the photographs you've seen here today. What other evidence is on the record? The Collier County Board of County Commissioners own office issued certificates of completion to BCBE for all the work that was completed during the home program. Those certificates of completion can be found in the binders over there that we have for each and every home that was renovated by the home program. Look to the record. If you do a public information request, there were thousands and thousands of pages of supporting documentation that was presented to the county clerk's office over the past five years. Every time they asked for something, home responded and they received it. We urge you to look at it. This one's my personal favorite because if we're really looking to see if uh, the work was done, I think we should look to our commissioners themselves. Commissioner Chair Tom Henning saw the renovations himself, as he stated at the meeting in January 2014, but he felt that the houses were too nice for affordable housing. The county can't have it both ways. Either the houses weren't renovated and 400,000 was supposedly stolen, or they're too nice. It makes no sense. Look at the hypocrisy of what is stated. Henning told commissioners he visited one of the low-income home houses which featured amenities such as marble countertops, wood floors, stainless steel appliances, and flat screen TVs. Commissioner Henning is stating that he saw these renovations with his own eyes and in the same exact meeting, the clerk of the court is asking what happened? Where did this money go? How do I even know the renovations happened? Well, look to the guy who's sitting next to you, the man who says that they are in fact there because he saw it with his own eyes, but they were too nice for low income housing. Who wouldn't want a house with flat screen TVs, Henning asked. Holy crow, not even Habitat for Humanity does that. We have the fiduciary duty to expend the public's funds correctly. Yes, you do. You do have the, the duty to expend the public funds correctly, and you need to start doing it, frankly. Look to the money that was expended on the Clif Clifton Al uh, Ars Larson evaluation. The flat screen TVs, I, I'm almost speechless because I don't know if Commissioner Henning's been in a store lately, but pretty much flat screen's all they sell. <laughs> um, so I'm not exactly sure. And, and even the, what are you trying to say, that, that, that affordable housing and people with low income, they, they don't deserve flat screen TVs? They don't deserve televisions? They don't deserve these type of granite countertops? And where's the inquiry? Because if Commissioner Henning was at that home, he should have asked the people at that home, Granite countertops and TVs were acquired through private funds and donations from local businesses. Where's the due diligence? Why wasn't that asked? Why are we complaining about people who don't have enough money actually getting television through a program that's here to help our community? Why are we now attacking the people who are giving these people the benefit of a home? People who would not normally get that benefit designed to bring affordable housing to Collier County and to provide families with homes that they would never normally be able to afford. 
As such, this was a labor of love, and it is well documented in the hundreds of renovation pictures that you're going to see over to the right side, taken by the home board of directors, many of whom were on site almost daily, John and Mel, and others who visited often, Gina, Julie, Russell, Mike. They were there to oversee these renovations and to ensure the program was administered properly. One of the things that struck me most as I looked through this, and again, I'm looking through this as a, as a former prosecutor of 12 years. I'm looking, for the, I'm looking for the holes. That's what you do as defense counsel and is definitively what, you do, what I used to do as a federal prosecutor. One of the things that struck me most was the amount of communication between the home board, Collier County, HHS. They were requesting assistance from HUD and we have continuously been trying to be in communication with HUD as well. Look at the emails, look at the letters. If there is any issue with this program, it is the way that county administers their grant programs and that needs to be evaluated. And we want to thank you for your time. I know it was long, but we believe it's extremely important. Not just for the members of the Home Board of Directors, for, but for anybody who's in fact doing business in Collier County, especially those who are trying to do what's right, who are trying to make this community a better place. The people of this community deserve that. The people of this community need to know the truth, and the truth is in your public record, and the truth is in the documents over there. So we invite you to look at those, and we thank you again.